I have a story to tell you guys about uh, the cra craziest and wildest TTRPG experience of my life. I played DC20 uh, with Brennan Lee Mulligan and Abria Iyengar at Gen Con. And a third player added in of Taylor Moore, who is the producer of uh, Worlds Beyond Number, a, one of the podcasts that Brennan, Abria, uh, Erica Ishii, and Lou Wilson is all on, uh, that they run a podcast of. Absolutely awesome podcast, and he's the producer of it, so they were all playing together with me. And the craziest part is uh, I came up through the TTRPGs with Brennan Lee Mulligan. I have made videos on this channel. I've always said in live streams, uh, he is my favorite dungeon master. He is my hero as far as the TTRPGs are concerned. Um, um, awesome person, great dude, uh, literally taught me how to be a dungeon master through watching the things he's done, through the different next level ideas of Homer, the way he sets the cinematics and all this other kind of stuff that sets the stage with mechanics, all the stuff. Um, uh, he essentially taught me the game. And uh, if you really step back and think about it, a lot of his inspiration is in DC 20. Uh, and I reached out to Brennan in that way and was talked to talk to Brennan. Uh, I worked with him in Alcanor's Almanac uh, in a small way. There's a rule in Alcanor's Almanac of an adversity system that is uh, heavily inspired and based off of uh, a, a Dimension 20 season of uh, um, um, uh, Unsleeping City, the New York setting of the, the magic, the magic in the city. Uh, the Unsleeping City had an addiction system in there and I based it uh, uh, an adversity system heavily off of that. So I reached out and I worked at work with their team and it made a whole rule system so i had a connection with brennan from that and then i reached out and talked to him about dc20 we had an hour-long zoom call and we had another one a few months later and he liked what he heard and liked the whole concept of dc20 thought it was cool the different direction i was taking the game in we talked about it and turns out that he was going to be at gen con and uh i was going to be at gen con too and he said what's your schedule and i literally scheduled nothing i didn't go to a single panel i didn't go to a single game i didn't run any game i just literally like only thing that mattered was running a game for brennan uh and then uh, we all scheduled it up and set it up and had this had the time slot we were good to go and then uh, i tried to get venues to get a location all this kind of stuff and then uh uh, uh his assistant reached out to me and said oh we gotta move the time slot i was like sure fine no matter no it's, absolutely anything matters and he said because brennan wanted to invite abria iyengar and then my brain exploded. Uh, that is insane. Uh, I met Abria through Dimension 20 uh, whenever they played uh, uh, Ma Ma Magic and Misfits. Misfits and Magic, uh, that, that episode, absolutely amazing. And ironically enough, sentimentally uh, fate enough, uh, they didn't play d d in that, in that uh, d season of Dimension 20. They played uh, Kids on Brooms. Uh, so... Abria was the game master and beautifully ran it. And she, ever since I met, uh, saw her on Exandria Unlimited and anything I've seen her on, she has blown my mind. I call her the meta queen. She is the queen of meta and has taught me things about different ways you can <laughs> transcend the game uh, from a meta standpoint and, and, and take your deep game master games to the next level. So that was insane to have those two at the table uh, from to the to my two huge inspirations of, of me uh, even just being who I am at this point and my, the skill set that I have, the mindset, I have all the stuff for them to be at the same table and then to find out also their producer was in, in the middle of all this. So the craziest game of my life, that's the setup uh, of what I uh, had to do. And I was extremely uh, uh, nervous, extremely excited and uh, absolutely wild and blown away from, from this whole thing happening. So um, uh, the, to, to take you through the whole situation, uh, I made a one shot from scratch, which might not have been a good idea, but I wanted to showcase DC 20 to these two people as best as I possibly could. Uh, and I, I made it from scratch. I wanted to showcase, uh, combat skill challenges. I want to showcase, uh, fate roles. I wanted to showcase help challenges. I want to showcase combat. I want to showcase all the things that DC 20 has to offer. And I asked them a question, oh, do you want me to do a pre-made character or you want to do character creation? And they chose to do character creation themselves, which made me excited because that means they cared enough to want to see the characters be made. But then also uh, now that three hour time window we had have to make characters, teach them the game, run a one shot. Oy, right. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to run through the whole thing, how the how the whole thing uh, went down. Uh, but the, the rest of the, uh, the the journey to get to the table with Brennan and Abria uh, is uh, I got there to the room. Uh, uh, Brennan's assistant found a room, worked with people at D&D. &D, and if you didn't know this, there is a there's an actually I have it pulled up on my screen right now. Uh, there is a, a, a video that was released, uh, an Astarian and a Kalarsh adventure. A love in the legendary action in Baldur's Gate. Uh, this video right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up right now. 
this video, uh, wh wherever they're at here, right? This video, there we go. Uh, oh, oh, let me move myself here. Uh, there we go. Uh, this video that they filmed was minutes after playing DC20 with me. <laughs> I just think I that's kind of crazy too, uh, is to see, to see that this game that they played at the Gen Con Stadium, this one, here we go. They, them two, <laughs> just finished playing DC20 with me minutes before going here. Uh, this thing started at like five or something and they, we ended our game at 4.30 and then they left to go. They, I think it started at six or something and at five they had to do curtain call or whatever, uh, technical things going on. But they ran a game uh, and this this whole thing, if you all wanna see it on YouTube, this is the, this is the game. Uh, but they ran that minutes after uh, playing DC 20 with me. Uh, and it was it was crazy. So we're in this massive theater hall and there's this room and I have this whole I have a, 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 a video I've, I've posted on it. But uh, we're in this room and this is there's this one table. And I set everything up and the tables and the chairs and all the different stuff. Uh, and it was crazy. So I'm in the middle of setting things up, middle of setting things up. The game was supposed to uh, start at 1:30, and like half an hour before Brennan shows up. And uh, I got to meet Brennan Lee Mulligan. And if there's anyone in the world that I could meet, you know that question people ask about like, oh, if you could sit and have dinner with anybody, I would have chosen Brennan Lee Mulligan. Like that would be my answer. So to meet that person, I don't think that's, that's a very rare opportunity for, for me to have. And a lot has led to that opportunity to be able to be possible. But yeah, uh, I, uh, Brennan walked in the room, there's two people at the door that he already knew and he greeted them. And I was like, <clears throat> oh, what? Uh, okay, uh, I guess here we go. I wasn't expecting that. He showed up early because he had some other stuff to take care of. And uh, we saw each other and we're like, hey! And now we've met, obviously, we've, we, we've met through Zoom and stuff, but never in person. So I uh, came in for the big bear hug and uh, uh, the nicest guy ever. As, as you would as you would assume and imagine no surprise no surprise genuinely excited to see me which feels felt, like, felt crazy um, but uh, yeah we just said that, that I was excited to play the game I was like I was excited to play the game with you this is crazy and that was kind of the moment of like I never thought if I, f rewind five years I know this might be a little cliche too but if you told me five years ago when I started YouTube while watching Brendan Lee Mulligan on Dimension 20 that I would be playing with Brennan Lee Mulligan and Abria Iyengar and their <laughs> Taylor Moore, their producer, uh, that I'd be playing with them. And not only would we not be playing Dungeons and Dragons, the game I was currently watching in, in DM, uh, we'd be playing a game that I made, be playing DC 20. That's insane. Um, and that's probably, <laughs> that's the, that's the, uh, the emotional aspect of it too. That's just wild. It's a wild experience to, ha to, to, to be, have that be why we're here. We're here to play DC 20. It's not what. So, um, uh, and that's just another thing that for, for, for those three to stop out of their, to take out of their time, all the stuff about the, these big things they're doing, they're about to run this game and they want to stop and spend hours playing DC 20. Like it just shows, um, uh, it means a lot. It means a whole lot. So, Whoa. Okay. Um, but uh, we we all that Brendan had to leave and go do some stuff, and then uh, Taylor came in. I got to meet Taylor Moore. We had to talk about. Uh, I learned a lot about Taylor Moore from from just kind of reading up on uh, all the stuff he's done. Uh, and he's he's a producer of lots of different podcasts that you probably know about. Uh, uh, so uh, met him. Extremely genuine dude. Just a big happy go lucky. Uh, is imagine Matthew McConaughey, just like a super a super chill happy Matthew McConaughey guy. He's just all good and it's all happy. He's just all smiles, man. Uh, he, props to you, Taylor. He probably made me kind of calm down because literally before he walked in, I, my literal hands were shaking. I have very steady hands. I have very steady hands. They don't move. Like, but my hands were literally like this. And I was like, this has never happened in my life. My hands have never twitched or tremored or anything. Uh, so I was like, okay, calm down, calm down. So Taylor probably was my uh, catalyst to be able to kind of calm down and feel all of that. And then Abria walks in and Abria walks in and uh, I've never been given a bigger hug by someone I've never met than Bria. Now, me and Brenda had a big, huge bear hug, right? But uh, I mean, we've talked multiple other times. We've sent multiple emails. We've Zoom called before. Uh, Bria has never, we've never spoken. We've never emailed. We've never seen each other ever. And I just f felt so loved <laughs> just from that uh, one hug. And she was just like, I'm so excited to play your game. And I was like, no, oh, what, what, what? So uh, that was crazy too. Uh, and then uh, we all, we all sat down at the table and that was another, like, like they're all kind of talking to each other. And I just had like this, like existential, like 
we're all gathered around the table. I'm at the head of the table behind this game screen. And I was like, I just kind of sat down. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. And uh, I guess I can, this will probably not be the best way to do this, but uh, I might as well show uh, some, some pictures uh, of that moment. Uh, oh yeah, here's, here's some, here's the, the, the big, the big hugs. There we go. Uh, big hugs with the Bria. Oh, that's my son climbing a pull-up bar. Big hugs with the Bria. Uh, uh, it, this is taken after the game. You can see the table in the background. Uh, there's Taylor Moore. Hey. Uh, and then uh, uh, me and Brennan. Uh, the a, a, and then the big squad all together. So, um, so yeah, that just was wild. To use Brennan's favorite word, that was wild. So um we all sat down we're kind of chilling we transitioned like hey so like let's play so then um uh i i started it off uh and it, those those who know me i'm a sappy dude i wear my heart on my sleeve i am a big sap ball so i had to start off by giving them some sappy gifts uh, i'm not going to get into the whole thing of like what i gave them and what i said and all that kind of stuff but I know them very well as far as you could learn from seeing what the works of stuff they've done. And I found very specific sentimental dice gifts uh, to give to them specifically for what they've accomplished and how they even met and how they all kind of work together as one. Uh, so I was able to kind of thank them and give them a sentimental gift because uh, I mean, what, what are you going to buy? What are you going to buy them? You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, trying to give them a thank you to truly let them understand how much I appreciate that they wanted to take the time, like I said earlier, to just play a game with me <laughs> that's, that's crazy um so um then uh i threw this down so, all right so y'all ready all right y'all ready you ready to go and then uh, i threw this at him i go hello one and all welcome to your first ever play test of dc20 i am your humble dungeon coach and with us are our wild, wild adventurers say hello wild adventurers um and i i threw that down and uh, that was just a little uh, uh icebreaker uh, honestly even for me just to be weird and goofy to kind of you know get shake out the nerves and stuff uh, but then we did character creation and we walked through character creation. Brennan created a dwarf giant, a dwarf and giant born uh, ancestry uh, commander, an intelligence based uh, commander. And he uh, he was like he just described himself as a square. He's like, I'm a dwarf, but I'm a giant born dwarf. So I'm just literally eight feet wide. Eight, like, I'm like a human sized wide wall of a person uh and he he took agility a negative two in agility and a, a three in intelligence it was beautiful he's like if it's time for me to die then it's time for me to die i'm not moving <laughs> so he was just gonna take whatever came his way not move and just get hit and he's intelligence but uh, it was beautiful it was beautiful so uh that was him and his shield was a barn door uh so there's that uh and then abria played a fallen angel born spell blade uh, uh, props to Abria for taking the Spellblade because if you play a Spellblade for the first time ever you gotta learn the Martial stuff and the Spellcaster stuff all at once and I got some more shout outs for Abria of how she played because it was masterful it literally felt like Abria had played DC20 before I think I asked her I was like have you played this game before like what the heck um, and then Taylor did a Redeemed Fiendborn so if you get caught, caught, caught that there Abria played, played a fallen angelborn and Taylor played a redeemed fiendborn. Super cool to see their little interaction when they did character creation stuff there. Uh, and then he was a sorcerer, like a dark uh, psionic umbral sorcerer. Um, so there you go. They uh, wanted to make, they started making characters and it, it was really cool to see them point out cool things about DC 20 in comparison to, you know, the games you're used to playing. I was like, oh, so that means you could do this. Oh, so now I can, oh, wow. Oh, that. so just to see them with like the game master minds that they have, appreciate and understand the direction I was going with and why I made the rule choices and why character creation works the way it does and all this stuff. Um, that felt really good for me not to have to say, oh, I did this because of it, or I did it because, and like they, they, they understood, right? Um, so that meant a lot. And then at the end of character creation, um, uh, Brennan said, wait, so that's it. That's not, wow. That's not bad at all. That's a great character creation. Cause also keep in mind, I was also teaching them the game. So, uh, we had three hours we had from one 30 to four 30 was the whole thing. And I want to, I got to respect their time. I'm shutting it down at four 30. So now that took an hour and a half, half of the time right now, keep in mind that hour and a half was hanging out and me not rushing them to, oh, let's play the game. Cause I genuinely 
just wanted to kind of let, let it be natural. Let it fly. I don't want to rush them. I'm just appreciative of them being here um, and me being here. Um, so that was some ch- kind of chill time. We're talking about stuff. I did the whole well, uh, thank you, the thank you, little thank you gifts and stuff. We talked about that. And then we did character creation and I taught them the game. All of that took an hour and a half. So now the actual character creation took way less time than that uh, because if you think of the whole big picture. So they were, they were in, in, impressed in general with how quick and easy that was to make characters cool and they also all three made characters from scratch so now i'm freaking out because i have an hour and a half to run this one shot and this one shot by the way uh, I, sh- I was going to say this at the beginning this one shot is called uh, uh the living tower is what i've named it uh it's the living tower it is going to be one of the one shots in the official dc20 uh, kickstarters pdf of uh the one shot collection uh the one shot collection is seven one shots which actually are going to be more more one slash two slash three shots uh adventures uh to be able to run it's going to be a pdf of all those uh seven different things all in one pdf and one of those uh, uh, one shots it's going to be the one that i ran for brendan lee mulligan and the Bray iron guard and taylor moore um uh, that's going to be in there so uh with that being in there anything i say from this point forward is going to be spoiler free you don't have to worry about me spoiling the one shot or watching as a player or a game master or whatever like that i'm going to keep all of that neutral you might get some story beats or vague story beats but no spoilers whatsoever as far as that goes so so no worries there um but uh i now knew i had a full-blown one shot to run in an hour and a half, which included two combats, two challenges. Uh, 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 those, yeah. So uh, here we go. Then I had to run into it. So now I basically started off by saying, hey, guys, if there's anybody in the world that I'd want to role play with, it would be y'all. But I'm going to bite the bullet on this one. And we are going to kind of fast track and like chong, 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 uh, uh, fast forward through a lot of the role play bits, because essentially all the role play bits, a lot of the role play, anytime you're talking in character and enjoying that type of thing, that can almost be in any TTRPG. You can be playing other games and role play. And, and there's not, if, if there's not mechanics present, you know what I mean? So I really wanted to showcase the mechanics uh, uh, of DC 20 and all the different aspects and, and the ways in which you can use them across a, uh, all aspects of all three pillars of the game, combat, exploration, social, everything. So I want to showcase that. So that was a little disclaimer and let's go. So the first thing we did was a fate roll story moment. Um, and this is always a fun way to start things off is, uh, everybody roll a D 20. So everybody rolls a D 20 and then, uh, whoever rolls the highest saved the day and whoever rolled the lowest beefed it and screwed the whole thing up. And, uh, as we did that, uh, Brennan rolled the lowest <laughs> and Taylor rolled the highest. And I was like, all right, cool. So, uh, in general with the story I had them tell was what was the last adventure you guys went on? Cause they're about to go on another one, but what was the last one you went on? And this in general also is another good little game master tip here to build on, in a one shot, build some sort of history with a group. So that this like, this is literally the first time these, p- these players are playing these characters sitting at the same table. It's a great icebreaker just as for the record. Um, because again, like I said, I made this one shot to be the best possible pitch that I could have of ever playing a game, which is another reason why I want to give it to you guys. Because if you want to play this with your friends, this would be the recommended one that I would say to do because I made it the most important one shot I've ever made. So um, uh, I start off with that icebreaker of everybody rolls a dice and then they got to tell a story about like, OK, cool. So what was the last mission you went on? And the th- <laughs> this is no spoilers because this is something they made up, has nothing to do with the one shot. They're like, yeah, so we went on a, a, a search and rescue mission. We went on a, so there was a, a, a person that was uh, kidnapped and we got to go rescue the person that was being kidnapped. And then Brennan chimed in and he's like, yeah, but the person already got rescued and we attacked the people that rescued them so (laughs) it was a hilarious scene of uh these uh uh, three guards kind of walking down the road with a unconscious uh uh, npc that that was the target of who was got kidnapped already on their backs who they just rescued from the bad guys on the way back to town and they ambushed those people so uh another thing i did the second part is uh, we did a flashback combat And what a flashback combat is, and another little tip to you guys, if y'all want to teach people the game, is I want to throw people into combat as soon as humanly possible when you run a one shot. You just want to throw some combat. Let's get our hands dirty. Let's play with these characters a little bit, right? So a flashback one shot is great because we're already in a flashback and I can end it at any moment and pull the cord. So we flashbacked to that combat. So I literally put their pieces down the battle mat and we had a combat of those three guards walking with the NPC and then busting out of the forest to attack. 
and roll for initiative. They're like, oh my God, we're playing. <laughs> wait, wait, we're going to play like the moment we just made up out of our heads. We're going to play that moment out right now. And I said, roll for initiative. We rolled for initiative. I taught them how the initiative worked and all that kind of stuff. And they eat and we, all we did was one round of combat done. And I just made up NPCs. I made up monsters on the fly, of a, which is really easy to do in DC 20. Um, just give them a condition and they spend action points to do it, whatever. Um, and we went through one round of combat. Super cool. <laughs> Flashback ends, right? Um, so uh, it was also some cool character building because uh, as, as the fate roll said, Brennan uh, rolled the lowest and he's like, get him! <laughs> kept, kept confidently saying that these were the people. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it, it was great. So uh, uh, that was the, the, little, the flashback combat. And then we went into a help challenge and um, nobody has ever seen or heard of a help challenge because I've not released any content on this. Uh, a help challenge is another way uh, that you can accomplish something that sometimes you might run into some problems with in D&D. But a help challenge basically is where one person's trying to do something and the other, other PCs get to help them do that thing. Now, when does that happen when you're playing TTRPGs? I mean, it happens a decent amount where somebody wants to do this one big thing and it's really important and it's all on them. But what is everybody else doing, right? And then you have the thing where someone's like, oh, I want to help them. Okay, I have advantage. La-di-da. Wow. What a great story moment. What a great teamwork feel. No, that's, that's, that sucks. Um, so just say you help and then they get advantage. And if somebody else wants to help, they can't because advantage doesn't stack or whatever. And then I'm sure... Blah, right, so a help challenge is one person's making a check and everybody else describes what they're doing, whether it be mechanically or role play wise or creative wise or whatever, and they get a D6 uh, dice to roll, a D6 help dice to help that one person. And the DC is pretty high. The DC is pretty high and the check's probably so high to where that one person couldn't do it alone. And they have to roll the check, add in the help dice and see how high they can get together as a team to try and accomplish that goal. And it's DC 20. So every five you succeed by gets you more successes. Every five that you fail by, maybe more worse stuff happens. You get the idea. So I ran them a help challenge. The help challenge was basically structured around uh, a tryout. They were trying to try out and impress somebody. Um, so I had a bit of a social aspect to it and things that they said mattered and uh, some other things that I won't get into for spoiler reasons. Um, but they failed miserably and it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, 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 Brennan and Bria both came up with next level ideas and they rolled their health dice. They rolled pretty well. And then Taylor was the one that was going to go and be the, the, the main the main man here. And uh, he rolled with advantage. I gave him advantage for some really cool ideas he has. Okay. All right, make it an advantage. Uh, and he rolled a one and a two with advantage. So he got a two plus and then they failed so they did not get enough success uh they did not hit the dc to be able to get it right uh i almost said success points but that's a skill challenge thing this is a help challenge so uh, they did not hit that dc and they failed uh which i also got to showcase in dc 20 the failing forward concept of yes you failed but they still get the contract i'm not going to end the one shot here and be like oh you don't get the contract now Where? like they failed and the fail state for this was you get the contract, but you don't get any extra healing potions or nice rewards or any extra bobs and bits. You don't get any extra cool stuff. You get the contract and you move forward. So all they got was the contract and one healing potion and a funny little story moment about how they got the contract, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. And spoilers. Um, so that was cool. Then I had to fast forward and cut everything else like there were so many things about travel and then resting and then uh, entering into the uh, place where they were going and like how to get into there i had to fast forward through all of it i did stop and do a fate challenge uh to showcase everybody roll a d20 whoever rolls the lowest uh, a fate roll is just a flat d20 roll if you're not familiar a fate challenge is everybody rolls a d20 whoever rolls the lowest something bad happens to that person and usually I also kind of pair in whoever rolls the highest has a chance to help them, maybe, right? Depending on how things go. Uh, but I am not going to get into that as well. But they thought that was an interesting little take. And just the story. They said, I really feel the story and the dice connecting to the story and the creativity. I feel so creative. I feel like we can do so much and we can tell so much a good story. That was a little um, a moment that, that, that we all had there. Um, and then uh, we did a combat skill challenge. Again, no specific details. We did a combat skill challenge where they had to fight stuff. Uh, They're attacked by things, wildly crazy things that they described and we can just, but there's no, there's no minis. There's no role for initiative. It doesn't take an hour because uh, time's tw ticking down at this point. Um, so we did a combat skill challenge and we all, we, they described all the stuff they were doing. They did this whole teamwork thing together and they're like, all right, here we go. Let's see how it goes. And then uh, uh, Brennan rolled first. 
and he rolled a natural one. <laughs> and in a combat skill challenge, you take damage uh, if you fail. So he took three points of true damage uh, in the middle of this from, from whatever happened, and he was getting eaten uh, by something. Uh, and a, a lovely bit of uh, character building there as well of, of how he described that. As the other two, I was like, it's uh, down to you two guys now. You got to get the three successes, and there's just two of y'all. Uh, and then Abria rolled really well, got two successes. Taylor rolled just well enough, got one success, and they succeeded. Uh, they picked up the slack of Brennan. <laughs> it's crazy to say. I can even razz him for that. Um, but uh, they succeeded. Nice. And they got a combat inspiration. Now, another thing is I, if I ever run a challenge leading up to a combat, especially I like to do, I wanted to showcase here, a skill, a combat skill challenge that leads into a combat immediately. Um, I like to have the reward be combat inspiration. So they already had it at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the game, I gave everybody inspiration, which is just game master inspiration. It's a D6, you can add it to any D20 roll you want after you make the roll and see the, all that stuff, you get the idea. Combat inspiration works the same way, but it can only be for the next combat you have. And then after that, it's gone, right? So you've got to use it during this combat or it's gone, right? And you can do that in other ways. But anyway, we're not tired of talking about inspiration. And all of that matters because of the wild and crazy role that Brennan had that just broke the game in the best way possible and showcased DC 20 in the best way possible. All in one moment. Absolutely insane. Uh, the stars aligned, fate aligned. Uh, one of the wildest moments happened where the dice and the player character choices showcased DC 20 in the best way I could have possibly ever asked for. So we're getting to it. Um, combat happens again, not describing anything in the combat. They are in the final combat of this one shot. And we got like, I think 40 minutes on the clock, 30 minutes on the clock of, of, of here we go. Uh, but they already learned combat from that little intro tutorial thing. So it went a lot faster uh, and they understood how things kind of worked. Um, so first round of combat, I have it all, all here. How, what all, what all happened? Abria was first up. She won the initiative. Abria's first up. Um, one action, uh, one action point to heal, uh, because she used an, uh, an, the angel, the angel born feature of a heal situation. And then she used her second action point to analyze creature. Abria is a beautiful beautiful player beautiful mind Be come on get out of here my heart s grew three sizes like um it, that's the type of stuff that game masters w w want from the players to engage with the world in these cool and unique ways and analyze creature you know how many times somebody's used analyze creature and i have played tests i have played dc20 more than anybody in the world and the amount of times that somebody's analyzed creature i can count on one hand and uh uh it's beautiful. I love it. I, it was amazing. And without her analyzing creature, it would not have led to the moment that happened and it all mattered. Uh, so crazy. Uh, so she analyzed creature, rolled high enough on the knowledge check and everything and learned something about the uh, this big, very large monster they were fighting. And uh, she learned two things uh, that she, it had PDR, meaning that if you have to, you have to roll a heavy hit to be able to bypass that PDR. It had a lot of PDR, it had a PDR of two, just whoa. Um, and um, it had another effect where if you deal big damage, to one single hit, a big hit, it has a weakness. And that's what I, those are the two things I told her, right? So um, that was Analyzed Creature, two action points down. And then uh, she did Bless and gave everybody Bless. Awesome. And rolled high enough to be able to get everybody. So, Abria's turn. Bang. Then it was the big monster's turn. Now it's my turn. I get to try and showcase some elements of DC 20. Uh, so, big, huge monster runs up, uh, hits hits, a, hits Abria real hard. But who's right next to Abria? Brennan's character, who's playing a tank. And what does he do? Reaction, raise shield. Brennan was tanking in DC 20. And tanking is my favorite thing to do in any TTRPG or MMORPG. Uh, I love tanking. And to see Brennan tank, I, I tear. I had, a, I had a tear. I sucked it back up so they didn't see it. But um, <laughs> amazing. Raise shield. Uh, the thing dealt three damage, but raise shield minus two only dealt one damage. Sick. And then Brennan's like, oh, okay. So you can tank in DC 20. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, yes, you can. Thank you. Oh, you see it. Um, so, uh, so now Brennan's one action point down. Keep that in mind because that's going to matter for the wild, uh, his wild turn, which wasn't even on his turn. Another showcase of DC 20. Anyway, um, so that's Abria's turn, or that's the, the, the monster's turn. Oh, uh, sorry. Monster ran forward, smacked Abria, but, but Brennan blocked it, right? And then two action, uh, two action, uh, grabbed 
up Abria's character and threw it across the room into Taylor's character, showcasing throwing, showcasing collision damage, and all this other kind of stuff. And so they, that, that was another, I'm purposely trying to showcase mechanics. Grabbing and throwing is a great uh, uh, tool there to showcase some fun stuff with DC20. So uh, there's that. Now it's Taylor's turn. And this is where everything went wild. Taylor used Psychic Fear. So Psychic Fear on the Big Huge Monster. Big Huge Monster failed the save, turns, and has to spend uh, its action, spend an action point immediately to run away as far as it can. Uh, just one action point. Uh, so one, it's one action point down. That's a, that's a nice thing. And it provokes an opportunity attack from Brennan, who is standing right there. So uh, Brennan's like, oh, heck, yeah, I, 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 I get an opportunity attack, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah that, that's of course, yep. Yeah. Uh, he's like, well, now, how much can I pump into this? And I was like, oh, yes. Which also is a side note. It's like a word that people just naturally use with DC. How many action points can I pump in? I'm going to pump some mana, I'm pump some stamina, pump some action points. So to hear him use that phrase phraseology that so many other people have used was, was kind of cool too. Um, he's like, I want to go all out on this. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's go. And he only had three action points, remember, because he did the raise shield. So he only had three action points. He's like, okay, so I want to attack and I want to add a knockback maneuver. I want to make an attack, add a knockback maneuver. I want to give myself advantage on this because also side note from a tactical standpoint, he wanted to give himself advantage so he could try and get a high roll uh, to be able to deal a lot of damage. And then he spent a stamina point to add a, a make a power attack, right? So I was like, wow, he literally went all out, right? They were level one, by the way, if I never said that. Um, so now he's adding a knockback also for a reason because there was something in the way this creature was running to another creature that was standing right here so he wanted to add a knockback maneuver and in the moment i ruled that the knockback the creature's already running the knockback would be him stumbling forward and smash into this creature which is awesome right um now the creature's larger than him so it rolled with advantage still failed etc um but so the knockback was successful and he rolls but here's the thing he rolled with advantage because he gave himself advantage and he rolled the combat inspiration and he rolled the dungeon master inspiration and he rolled a Bria's bless that he just was given. So he rolled two D20s, two D6s and a D4, rolled it on the dice, on the D20 dice was a two and a 19. So I, mean, I guess it could have been a natural 20, but the, 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 the dice were in Brennan's favor. He rolled a 19 on the dice, plus four for his attack check, rolled like a six on one of the D6s, a four or five on the other one, uh, rolled the D4, and he got a 34 to hit, which was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Obviously, that's just a, some wild level of brutal. He dealt like eight points of damage with a single one-handed weapon. As we just, I, know, I don't want to describe the, the creature again for spoiler reasons, but big, massive blow of the creature literally effectively one shot this big creature because of some of the effects of dealing big damage to it and uh, that's all i'll say there but effectively one shot it to the point where it was rendered useless in one moment and uh it was just a crazy moment y'all uh uh to see that happen uh i literally i got up out of the table i was walking around they they were like high, high five. it was an electric moment that you we you all know the type of moment i'm talking about and for that moment to happen that's not on me. That's on the players to do really cool, creative stuff together and play the game together. And that's on, in, in some ways, DC20's rules to allow the overlap of abilities and, and all of that type of stuff to be together in that way. Um, and all of that was triggered together um, because Abria did bless and Abria did analyze creature to learn about this big thing, to have Brennan be like, I'm just going to hit it once real big. And then Taylor did the psychic fear to trigger the opportunity attack for Brennan to pour everything into and it was wild absolutely wild uh and so there was a, a moment where like it, it, Brendan Lee Mulligan just rolled a 34 to one shot and, and like ruin you know like whenever game masters get their time their monster gets ruined and they can't do anything anymore and, and there's that like that that funny adversarial vibe to have that, in that with Brendan in that moment was 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 my highlight of the whole situation to see all three of them play together and then to follow it up Abria said something that, that hit with me that hit with me hard there too. She said, I don't know, I have never felt so much teamwork in a game like this right now. I feel like we are fighting this thing together because literally they were. Everyone was overlapping their stuff. And then Taylor's like, wait, this is my turn. <laughs> so Brennan had the spotlight from this big, huge thing he did on Taylor's turn. So that was just also funny for Taylor to have that realization like, wait a second, it's my turn. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, that was absolutely crazy. And so then at the end of Taylor's turn, uh, he cast another spell and I initiate a spell duel. So that I had, there was another, uh, the, the, uh, the bad guy that got ran into, uh, initiated a spell duel, tried to cancel a spell. It worked. The spell duel worked. I canceled the spell. Ha 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 ha. Also being able to showcase how cool spell duels are and the kind of cool flavor of how the spell duel happened in the midair. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get into that too. Uh, but then that, that was the first round. And so now we're into round two. Some other enemies are doing things and other stuff's going on. I'm not going to get into all of that. I'm kind of focusing on what the players did. Uh, but then the second round, everybody just got to clean up. Uh, Abria, uh, oh, also, sorry. At the end of the round, uh, uh, Brennan's character went last and his turn was immediately over. Beautiful, because he spent all of his action points in one turn, and then it was done. And they also love that that concept. So Brennan actually showcased one of the coolest aspects of DC20 about how action points work. And he's like, I love that. I could choose to spend all my action points and take my turn now. Because technically, he did two turns. Uh, he raised shield to block for an ally, and he poured everything he got into one single attack. Beautiful. And it was efficient for him too because his character has a very slow movement speed, and he purposely uh, uh, he purposely wanted. He's like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to run after this thing and spend an action point to run after it. Uh, I'm just going to take it now. So it was. <laughs> Uh, it all just worked out. It was a really cool showcase. Uh, so then the second round of combat, Abria and Taylor uh, both kind of go after two different monsters, take them both out. Taylor takes out the boss, and we ended with a big, huge shebang. And we also ended on, give me a story fate roll. And they're like, wait, so, okay, wait, what? And so uh, uh, the story fate roll, and this was an Abria Iyengar move, as a, another props to Abria, is uh, I had him roll a fate roll. Hi, there's the, the way the story ends goes this way. Low, the way the story ends goes this way. And you can kind of see how that could lead if this was a campaign or something. And it continues off in these different branching directions based on this fate roll, uh, which is a fun thing to do. So they rolled. Uh, Brennan rolled. I told Brennan, you have to be the one to make the final roll. He rolled it, got a six. And the fate roll was a different story, a little bit of a dark twist to the end. And we ended the one shot. So um, uh, it was absolutely crazy to hear uh to see how they excited they were abria kept saying multiple times this is so much fun uh and just genuine excitement at the table seeing things seeing brennan realize and like uh understand why the rules were the certain way and, and play it uh, uh play, them all playing masterfully like, like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do this these action points like they played before uh it was so 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 cool uh an absolutely insane experience. Uh, and I think the the, the last uh, comment that rang with me is Brennan called it a masterpiece uh, was was or the, the word that kind of just just hit me there of uh, he said um, it's made to enhance and spotlight creativity. And, and, and that means a lot to me. Uh, my my tagline since the beginning on YouTube is to stay creative and think outside the box. And for him to see, oh, see. <laughs> For him to see that in my game, that I've worked so hard to make sure that there's windows to set people up for success, for the game masters to run. And one of the things I told Brandon at the beginning is, is uh, I'm sitting at, a t and I said this to them, I'm sitting at a table with, in my opinion, the two best game masters in the, to, in the world, right? But I want people that have uh, just started game mastering, brand new, they've never done it before, and they're trying to run a game, I want to support that person and have rules that are epic and lead to storytelling, lead to epic moments, are fun, they don't get in the way, they can fade into the background, and I want them to have that as the base foundation of the rules so that it's just fun no matter what. And if you get better at game mastering, it's even more fun for your players. Uh, and so for Brennan to see that like this is really made for people to, that set people up to shine and let their creativity shine and let storytelling and teamwork all come together, uh, it, it, that was that was awesome, and the whole thing was awesome. So then I had some parting gifts for them at the end as like a thank you gift. It was like so I got, I got them a, a, a mimic bag. Uh, there was on the convention floor at Gen Con. There's these really well done mimic uh, like black leather mimic bags uh, that I got them, which I thought was fitting based on the the Living Tower. It does have to do with things coming to life and animation of things, um, uh, but that's that's not a spoiler. Um, so got him that, some other cool little things, and we all kind of talked. I gave them the action track. So I, I, the action trackers that I normally have to show, I don't even have that action tracker because uh, they, I gave it to them. Uh, and it was a wild, wild, 
wild experience uh, that I will never forget. And it was a blast. And then we all kind of, I already showed the pictures there of us uh, all, all hugging up and stuff after that. So um, yeah, uh, we all kind of hung out afterwards and kind of talked about the, some of the rules, talked about how the game works, talked about how the, how the whole thing uh, went down. And uh, then they had to go do uh, that, that game that I just showed you. So uh, yeah, I, that is the story of Gen Con uh, and the wildest game that I've ever played. So there you go. 